Hello fellow God Waiters, TLV Mortal finally had its official version released a few days ago, and it even includes a limited time free DLC. I know the DLC is not translated yet, and along with a lot of things they have added in the official version, and just give the translation team a few months time and they might be able to translate most of the stuff. And yeah, so I know there are still a little bit bugs here and there, I mean, mostly visual bugs, for example, like this. But I still quite like the new UI system, and also, you know, the DLC seems to be fun, even though I haven't really explored it that much. And anyways, thank you very much for liking my previous video about 10 tips for the new players to this game. But myself have realized that those 10 tips are mostly quite big and broad, it's more like general advices. And yeah, so this video will be going to give a bit more specific actual tips to newer players. I mean, I would say many of them ca can be pretty obvious to some of the people, but it's kind of ignored by some others. And I would say most of them are kind of covered in my Chaos playthrough already, but I think it's still good to basically compile them, put them all together into one specific video. So here we go. To start, even before we start the run, Elden Dragon Gora looks very good, but if you're just first time to play in the game, I actually do not recommend you take it because taking this thing which means you will you will take the responsibility of managing a small sect and it can be a bit overwhelming for new players but it does give you a lot of benefits when you become sect leader and that's the thing even if you do not choose this you can still become sect leader in early game and enjoying all the benefits if you are just coming there you don't want to spend half an hour to Either reading a, reading a guide or watch my videos about sex management, don't choose this. Now, as you start the game, if you choose higher difficulties, you can choose to skip the Jagu quest. In that way, you can directly use a portal to go to the Yoning region. However, do not forget that you can still take the quest in the tower with the purple exclamation mark, which will give you an orange rarity menu. So take this quest, choose to you know, go to the bandit village. Here you can either choose to negotiate, I mean, you have to negotiate, sorry, confirm there. And then you can either choose to ask for the more detail or directly slaughter them. If you choose to ask for the more details, don't forget to choose to slaughter them again here. You just need to have a fight. Anyways, once you finish the fight, you get some, some item and some money. You need to listen to this bandit, tell him to continue, and then you will get more money and a book. Do not read this book. Do not read this book. Once you confirm with everything, you will go to get this jade charm. And now you need to bury them, very important, and go to the village, give 800 spirit stones to the mother of the bandit, come back to the town, give everything, do not read the book, give them to the woman, and then one month later, if you do not put this jade charm into your storage, then you will get orange menu. You might want to keep this in the storage and wait for higher realms, but it's not necessary. Welcome to the first town, buy a few things. One is the psychic charm, which and second is flying sword. And of course, if you have the money, you can also buy a chi refining pill to break through the late stage. So the psychic charm, very important, you can buy two or three because you can use them so that to reveal a special location of that region around you for big regions. So you might need to use it a few times. When you intersect, you can go to the behemoth peaks and here you can transform a different type of the fruits into the ones you want. Well, of course, you need two of the wrong types in order to get one of the correct types that you want. And many new players do not know this function exists, which is puzzling because there is a quest to guide you for it. Anyways, you can also buy all the different kind of fruits from your stack and that stack is really where you get all your fruits from. You should choose a stack which has your main martial art, for example, if I need blade, and then use all the others to come fit it to the behemoths. And now on the big map, sometimes you see this icon. If it's not spawned near one of the sects, you know, basically your sect before a sect quest, then you know it's a special icon. You get in there and you will find normally a pretty good menu for yourself. On the big map at North 69 East 95, if you do a geo here, you will meet Mr. Mystery Man Joe and find a foundation level mount. It's for free. And similarly, if you go to Huafeng region, North 95 and East 69 and do a geo there, you will meet him again and you will get 10 level 6 skill fruit. It's meh, but better than nothing. 
I believe there's one more in the memory gym, but you're, it's not something to remember about. In the official version of the game, sometimes you see this little icon on the map, and actually it is a special dungeon. So if you enter there, you will find a special room with a little skeleton. And if you go to that room, you will find a chest with three light monsters. Just defeat them, you will gain the chest, and you will finish the dungeon. Remember to go to this room before you finish the dungeon, because otherwise you cannot get in there anymore. To break through from Qi refining to foundation, there are three different methods. Similarly, from Qi canalization to golden core, there are five different methods. And there is really no reason you choose anything other than the best, because I would say the difficulty is almost the same, and the best method will give you higher stats and makes your later own game much more easier. And if you click on this, it will show what kind of thing you need. So you always need three out of uh, six treasures, and you always take the higher rarity one because it in general gives you uh, better stats. And then you need to get five, six different cheats from the six different regions, and uh, Actually, you don't really need to defeat the boss because, you, again, if you put your mouse over there, you can see that you can simply kill monsters in those regions, the normal ones, and you will get the shards, and you can, you can combine the shards in a town workshop, and those will give you a purple rarity chi, but it's the same as a red rarity chi for in the stats wise because they only affect the chance you break through, and even if you fail, you just receive a lightning retribution, which you can easily pass through if you have enough pills. So, yeah. No need to wait for the game to refresh those spots for you. And if you really need want to do that, get all the bosses, there are two tricks. One, you can use Sky Prayer Talisman, use it at any place where it's Chi, and choose the corresponding weather. And if you succeed, then to generate that weather, then the next day or the same day, the corresponding boss will refresh. It's just a game won't directly tell you in the notification board, but if you save and Quit and then reload the save, you will see it happening again. Or you could or you could just simply go to the region if you know what kind of boss has been refreshed. A second method is to find this quest, kill the chi deviated cultivator into your sect, and it's always hell difficulty. And it appears sometimes. You might need to be a bit higher in the sect, who knows. But anyway, take this quest and do not finish it. You could get rid of the map you or you don't need to, but as long as you do not do this quest, the next month, you will find that on the notification that all the six different beasts will appear on the map. And of course, this actually doesn't work if you reload the save, okay? So that's how it is. But you can consider this that you didn't kill that bad cultivator who is plotting for all the monsters to attack the towns. And then you can find where are those monsters. And then you go to the corresponding town and you will find them. And you can defeat them to get higher, you know, high rarity cheese or simply for fruits or for some materials or to learn some beast skills those notifications also where you can f find monsters for those artisan books but in the first in the first auction you will find now that some new type of artisan books each of them will add actually 20 artisan skills so if you have enough spirit stones do not forget to come to the auction and take those books Now, talking about items. So first of all, you probably want to upgrade your ring as soon as you reach the new realm because that will give you more capacity. And if now, all with all these items, what you can do is, for example, some of the, you probably want to keep some pills in your inventory, but if there are something which is already low realm and if there is only one or two threes left, you probably want to eat it if it's taking too much space as well as all those uh, talismans, or if you fruits, if you need to save them, save them, otherwise just eat them. So it's, this is a bad habit to keep everything here. Books, same thing. Gear is only this thing you anyways need to equip them. Now materials, this is the big part. So let's look at what are those materials you will get. So let's get rid of everything else first. So first let's look at alchemy. So these were just herbs. And you would need those herbs to do alchemy, to go to artisan and do alchemy. You will see here you need some of those herbs. And notice that you usually need a few more than is actually required. For example, turmeric gives uh, wood, but you also need some other herb 
gives lightning. So before you actually enter thing, you don't really know what kind of thing it is. It is normally you don't really notice it as well. So keep most of the herbs in your inventory. That's what I do because af after all, they just stack to each other. And if you click on forge, it only gives the rare materials. You should save this. And breakthrough material, of course, save it into your tree vault. Now, monsters, interesting part. First of all, you see a lot of these kind of things, say the rare plant, the broken artifact. Those things were actually also used for making artifacts. They are artifact making materials. So just like herbs, you can keep them. It's not really taking too much space, I would say. Now, those comprehension material and learning manual materials. So once you already break through to, for example, I'm a chicanization now. So what I need is so crystal and higher level chicken and sand compared to so stones and lower level ones. If I already have all my skills, you know, low level ones maxed out, then I don't need them. You can get rid of it. But otherwise, you can keep them some of them in, in in the case that for example if you still have one of let's say i still want to use this mastery and i want to comprehend it then keep that uh, comprehension materials in your now about these ones wind essence bamboo lightning fur these are can be used for making talisman if i have if you have learned any talisman later on and then finally there are something special like blessed food something blessed thing and also some of those uh, materials, like bell belt. You can find a bounty board, and for example here, you need to collect this. So it's better for you to finish this quest, so where you can get spirit stones as well as some reputation and master's de mayor's decree, rather than you direct sell it to the market. Many new players, when they try to go from Yongli region to the Huafeng region, they were got blocked by the Nether Mountain. But the way is actually quite simple. You just need to go t to the bottom and go bypass it. So you go through later and pass this nether mountain. I mean, you can't pass through if you go up, but you can go through like this. It's actually the same thing. Go to every area. So you need to go through like this, come to here, go to the top and here. But only difference is around here. Though. If you are a sect leader of a small sect in the Yongling region, or for example if you cho have chosen the Elder Dragon Aura sect, then you need to shift your sect to the Huafeng region once you uh, already break through the Qi condensation. And to do that, you need to go to your console hall and go to sect relocation and build a flying ship and finish the quest. But remember that it's better for you to conquer other sects and so that you can collect all the 12 different martial arts and spiritual roots before you're doing so because this will allow you to spawn all the different uh, fruits in your treasure pavilion once it refreshes and also all the you can choose different type of uh, menus so that you're in your menu library and when you shift your sect to the new region this will still remain so you still have 12 different roots and yeah, but if you are not in a sect leader, like if you have listened to my advice, you stay at sect disciple, then you, what you can do is once you break through the Qi condensation, you just go to one of anywhere in the Huafeng region, spend the, spend the month there, and then the next day, the next month, you will receive a message from your sect telling you that, okay, you can join the next branch sect from the Huafeng region. And yeah, so that's the most easiest way. And in case... One more thing, if you really want to quit your own sect and join another sect, you can always go to promotion and here, click leave to quit your sect. And remember that once you click the leave, you cannot join back the same sect in three years, I think. However, for example, if you used to be, for example, here in the Moxia sect in Yongling branch, you quit this thing, you don't need to wait for three years in order to, in order, if you just simply want to join the branch, So you can still join this immediately, but as you know, you don't need to do so because just spend the month in Huafeng region, the game gives you a quest directly to join the higher branch. Oh, I forgot to mention, interest item. So it's better you keep one of the interest items that you are interested in so that it adds your mood by 80. Just keep one of it in your place and sell everything else. It's because once your mood it goes below 50, you are going to get a bad uh, destiny, a bad de temporary destiny. So 
just make sure that when you pass a month, your mood is above fifty, so not red. So keep one of them in your、uh, inventory to prevent that. And also, once you progress to higher realm, for example, I'm at Chi Condensation, then I am only interested in blue rarity items. So if I have a lot of green ones, then even if supposed to be the one I am interested, I cannot use them. So make sure that you have the up to realm interest item. Once you reach Chi Condensation, now you can see those shrine, immortal shrine on the map. And one of the most important one is. Always the one in the Yongling region, Jade Blossom Shrine. In your game, it might not be exactly here. It might be here, 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 here. Could be anywhere in the Yongling region. But the reason why it's most important because you can worship the shrine by giving them some expensive items. So what matters is actually the selling price. Look at the bottom、uh, right of the whole place. So you see this one selling price one thousand seven hundred. This one two thousand seven hundred. This one four thousand five hundred. So. Depending on the realm, how much you need in order to fill this one bar is different. So if I right now I am at chi condensation, I believe the number is three thousand. So if I put this guy, it won't be enough. But if I put this、uh, ultimate of chi condensation, which costs five thousand ish, then in one go I can、mm, fill the bar. Let's just show you that how much it is. So first, let's show this. If it's two thousand seven hundred. It will goes this much, and it doesn't really feel it. But next month you can come back again in, to give her another one, so that to fill this bar. But on the other hand, if you have it, you can do it in one go, and she will give you skill fruit. And this, the level of skill fruit will change with depending on your realm. So if you are at higher realm, it will give you better skill fruit, and therefore this is the. Your best way for you to get skill fruits. You can come here each month, and if you are sec leader, you will be full of red books every all the time. And if you are doing nothing else important, for example, you are just simply upgrading your skills, which takes time. I know it's boring. Then you can just stay here, bring a lot of book, for pass the month, learn something, give the give her some red book, get the skill fruits. When you progress to Chi Condensation, you need to go through the Spirit Lock Circles in order to break through to Golden Core. Same thing when you add Golden Core in order to break through the Origin Spirit, you need to go through Demon Lock Circles in Hundred Thousand Hills. And therefore, once you come to Huavong Region, keep some G4 fruits in your、uh, in, in your either in your inventory or better in your tree vault. Don't eat all of them because you might end up having no fruits. In order to finish those quests, remember the spirit lock one. Each of them is three, and you need, I think, four of them. Not end of again, of course. Spirit lock circle, and for hundred heal, the thousand heals one demon lock. Each one need five, and you need three of them. So it's twelve and fifteen. The best mount of each region is always coming from the the tower or say the the pagoda, so the warring pagoda. In order to beat it, you need to be at the latest. Stage and kind of optimized of that region. For example, for the Huafeng region, I need to be late Golden Core in order to beat this tower mostly. And this is also a good thing for you to test if you are strong enough to defeat those world boss in order to progress to the next region as well. The main thing is the first time you defeat this tower, you gain a good mount, and basically it's best mount of Golden Core, Northern Soul. Enlightenment, as well as transcendent, correspondingly. And in order to enter this tower, you need things called Soul Divine Stone, and you can get those if you are farming the Fallen Valley. And Fallen Valley is also something you probably want to farm a bit to gain some artifact spirits once you are at Golden Core. If you are blocked by the East Sea in the Huafeng region, you don't know how to come to the Hundred Thousand Hills. Go to Jingwei and start her quest at Golden Core because otherwise you won't you will be killed by the Levita immediately. But yeah, finish the Jingwei quest, then she will fill the sea, and then you can pass through this to hundred thousand hills. And again, you need to go through the most edge way. Go to, keep to your way to the right side, and do not be blocked by the mountain. One small trick: if you want to 
go to higher level regions without going through the monsters region or for example you are blocked by the eastern sea if you haven't finished the Jingwei quest what you can do a trick is go to any bounty bound of the town and find this kind of quest help NPC retrieve their lost ring many times those those rings or once you take this quest actually we already take it once so you can see that you it will be in your quest list and it will be owned by certain NPC. At that NPC, there's a chance for them to appear at higher regions. For example, now my quest tracking shows that the NPC is over here. If you are lucky that they are not in the wild, but in some town, then you can use a portal and directly click this to go to the new region zone. And once you come to a town, you can always use portal to transport back and forth. So yeah, this is a trick. I would so and this is the NPC and by the way the NPC will always have a little bit icon here and if you look at their artifact there's the ring and you know why this NPC have one heart on me because I actually this ring is actually not on his initially I found the NPC which had this ring steal the ring and then I find a higher level NPC is North and so which I know that he has a chance to go to higher level regions I gift this ring to him that's why he likes me a bit and then I'm just waiting for him to appear in Yimou and then I can teleport so this is a trick but do not use this way to go to Chiyu because you need to go through the giant quest and then here you will trigger the main quest of the Chiyu region and if you fail to do so you might mess up with the main quest and you cannot locate your uh, relocate your sect from the Mujian region to Chiyu once you reach the Yimou region, you can go to any this kind of you know small dungeons there, and there you will find a, a special room with a skull, you know the green skull, and then go to those rooms, investigate. You will start the quest chain. It's quite a long quest chain of Darius Mine Pavilion versus Mine Snap Temple, and you can find more detailed uh, stuff in my Chaos playthrough. But first of all, every month you will pop up some random small quests. You can those will show as some kind of icons on the map you can go there and you normally will give you quite some uh, skill fruits which is nice and also there are four main quests in this quest chain one is meet the fake Tianbao second one is when you see Tianxuan and Dian two are fighting you need help one of them it doesn't matter which side you choose at that point if you find choosing helping one side get you killed reload the save helping the other side maybe it's easier the third step is actually more important, which is I, my this character, at now. You will meet a certain uh, demonic woman tells you that to go to northmost ice cave. So those the ice cave is almost always around here, and there you need to defeat a monster called Zhu Jian, and whose stats actually scales with your realm. So it doesn't matter when you need to defeat it; it always stat scales. Once you defeat that thing, you can give this item to either Tianxuan or Dian to either side. You, there will be two icons on the map. And if you give it to the Darius Mine Pavilion, you gain the Supernova Sword. A lot of people are asking me, what is those fancy shiny rotating sword around your character? That is Supernova Sword. Get it that. And or if you give it to Dian, you will gain the King of the Dark River fate. But yeah, both are not too bad fates. And the good thing is it also changes your Dao Mine which gives you plus 40 luck once you reach perfection, so it's great. And finally, many new players were blocked here at the top left by the Nether Mountains because there's no way and your quest ask, requests you to come to here to, f to find one of the Nether seeds. And that is simply because you didn't finish the Argar quest, so this giant. So, and the reason might be because you actually didn't finish the very beginning the the, the whole issue the sun quest so you need first finish that quest after that when you come to here you will meet the giant here you talk to the giant he will start walking go through two different small quests side quest one is around here ish where you will meet the draw demon another is around here ish where he will meet a uh, carpia and finally if you taking care of him he was slowly moving 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 towards along this way and finally reach here and break the mountain and don't worry even if he dies even if he dies when you come to here you will trigger a different quest and then a certain person will tell you how to do but anyways do the giant agar quest in order to break this mountain
And if you want that to trigger, you need to first finish the whole issue of the Sun Quest. Well, I know I did mention in my 10 tips video that I suggest new player to stay as true disciple in the sex so that you can experience the full content of sex tournaments, sex competitions, sex battles, etc. However, that's where is, there is an exception that when you are already at Mushen region, you should become a sex leader. And this is not only because you probably want to, you know, optimize a bit at enlightenment late because the trial of the nether, nether bird and also some of the enemies in Chiyo region have become more difficult. So you want to get more mind skills and being a sex leader just more convenient. But most importantly, once you break the nether mountain by the finishing the Argar quest, you will progress with the Chiyo region main quest. And that will allow you to shift your sect relocation to Chiyo region via the quest. And that means also, that means this is a la your last chance to become a stack leader is at Mushian region. So you should become a stack leader here. Because if you miss this opportunity, once you progress this thing, you will not be able to actually have a proper sect in Shio region. Because even if you join a sect in Shio region, you cannot become a stack leader there. And that's mainly because Shio region the sects are just not developed for whatever reason they did put or the shield set in a very original useless state. So yeah, become stack leader at Enlightenment and I believe around that time you have finished this much, it is about time for you to learn how to manage a sect. And now come to the Chiyo region and the Cultivators Alliance. Well initially Cultivators Alliance should be around here and once you progress with the quest eventually you will become the alliance leader and you will shift alliance over here. So previously there is this wall here and people were asking how do you bypass this wall? So while the Cultivator Alliance is still here, they are used then if you take one of the quests from the Cultivator Alliance, which allows you it needs you to find somewhere beyond the wall, there will always be a little teleport thing. You can come through that teleport to pass through the wall. And after the quest goes, you can just simply relocate your Cultivator Alliance behind the wall. So you go to anywhere. And even there, you can see there's a portal here, which basically transports you to somewhere further away from here. So this is a new wall. So it's the same mechanism. Okay. And for all about the Cultivator Alliance, there are a lot of things, but one of the biggest things that new players tend to miss is main menu pavilion. And there are three tabs. So remember, there are three tabs. You can buy all kinds of stuff, including skill fruits and textbook and artisan books, and most importantly, heavily essence elixir. You need this thing in order to progress in Transcendent, and this is the only place it is available. So don't forget to buy it. You know, farm those contributions by doing quest or going through the monster's wave, and then buy it. And I believe that would be everything. I mean, this is just a compilation of all kind of questions that I see a lot of new players tend to encounter. Some of them you might find it very basic. Come on, it's like, oh, come on, who don't know this? But believe it or not, many people still don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. And if you are interested in more details about the stuff, including the entire main quest run of the Taoist Pavilion or many other small side side quests, you are welcome to check out my chaos playthrough as well as some other new videos that is going to come all right that will be everything at zero thank you for watching and please consider leave a like subscribe and i will see you next time